Betsy DeVos, in my opinion, is on our children's side. She's devoted her life to helping mainly low-income children have better choices of schools. Most of the criticism I've heard of her amounts to three things. One, she supports public charter schools. Two, she supports giving lower-income parents more choices of schools for their children. And three, she's used her considerable wealth and effectiveness to advance ideas. I believe she's in the mainstream of public opinion, and her critics are not. First, let's take the idea of charter schools. They are public schools with fewer government rules, fewer union rules, so teachers have more freedom to teach and parents have more freedom to choose the school that best suits their child. Nothing new about it. In 1991 and 92, President H.W. Bush proposed start from scratch schools. He called them New American Schools. He raised $70 million for New American Schools Development Corporation to encourage innovative ideas. Then in 1993, in January, in my last act as President Bush's education secretary, I wrote every single superintendent in the country, and I asked them to try something that was invented in Minnesota by the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, something called charter schools. There were 12 of them then. Since then, there's been broad support for the idea. Albert Shanker, the late head of the American Federation of Teachers, endorsed those charter schools. In 1977, President Clinton said, we need 3,000 charter schools by 2002. Senator Hillary Clinton supported charter schools. President George W. Bush supported charter schools. President Obama supports charter schools. His first education secretary, Arne Duncan, described himself as a, quote, strong supporter of charter schools. John King, the current education secretary, founded a charter school or ran a system of charter schools. Congress in 1994, 98, 2001, 2015, always bipartisan, usually by huge margins, supported charter schools. 43 states and the District of Columbia operate charter schools. So over nearly 30 years, those 12 Democratic farmer labor charter schools in Minnesota have 6,800 public charter schools. 6% of America's public school students attend them. So who's in the mainstream here? The Democratic Farmer Labor Party in Minnesota, Presidents Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, the last six U.S. education secretaries, the U.S. Congress, 43 states, the District of Columbia, Betsy DeVos, or her critics. I think pretty obviously she's in the mainstream. She's on the side of our children. Let's go to the other criticism giving low-income parents more choices of schools that wealthy Americans already have. More specifically, the objection is that public money shouldn't follow poor children to an accredited school of their parents' choice, public, private, or religious. Arguing against that is arguing against the most successful social policy this Congress has ever enacted, the GI Bill for Veterans which appropriated federal dollars to follow veterans to the school of their choice, Notre Dame, Yeshiva, Maryville College, University of Tennessee, any accredited institution. It produced the greatest generation, and it produced a model for all of our federal aid for colleges. $29 billion of Pell Grants this year are in vouchers. They, go, they follow the student to the school of their choice. Nearly $100 billion in new student loans follow the student to the school of their choice. Why is such a great idea for college students deemed to be such a dangerous idea for K-12 through students? Many of us believe competition produces the best colleges, and it might produce the best schools. Many scholars have suggested that. Ted Sizer, distinguished educator, suggested a poor kid's bill of rights 40 years ago. Today, 50 states provide parents more choices of public schools. 15% attend a school other than their school of residence through open enrollment. 44 states allow sending children to public schools outside their district. 34 states within their district. In addition to that, nearly 400,000 children are served by 50 private school choice programs across 25 states, the District of Columbia, and Douglas County, Colorado. Congress passed bipartisan legislation with Senator Lieberman at the head of it, creating the D.C. School Voucher Program in 2003 to date helping 6,100 children, more than 1,000 children this year standing in line waiting for that opportunity. So there's been growing support 
since President H.W. Bush proposed the GI Bill for kids to let states who wanted to try expanding choice for low-income students to today, where 2015, 45 United States senators supported the scholarships for kids that I proposed and that Senator Scott proposed for students with disability. 45 United States senators thought that was a good idea. According to the 2013 Lunch Global Public Opinion Survey, 73% of Americans support school choice. 64% say that if given the financial opportunity, they would send one or all their children to a different school. So who's in the mainstream here? The GI Bill for veterans, Pell Grants, student loans, both President Bush, the president-elect, 25 states, Congress, and the D.C. voucher program, 45 U.S. senators in 2015, 73% of Americans, Betsy DeVos, or her critics. Pretty obvious. She's in the mainstream. She's on the side of our children. The final criticism is she's used her wealth to support these ideas. I think she deserves credit for that, not criticism. Would the critics be happier if she'd spent her time and her money trying to deny children more choices of schools that wealthy families already have? We're fortunate that Betsy DeVos is the nominee for U.S. Education Secretary. She is and has been on our children's side. I support her confirmation and look forward to working with her.